It's Travel Michigan. I'm Dave Lorenz along with Michelle Grinnell. And Michelle, where are we headed to? We are headed up to Alpena on Lake Huron and Thunder, the Thunder Bay uh, area specifically. And we're talking with Jeff Gray, who is the superintendent of the Thunder Bay National Marine Sac- Sanctuary. And they have some great events coming up in the next couple of weeks, including underwater robots, which have a much fancier science name than that. Hmm. But I like to call them underwater robots. Uh, And so Jeff is going to tell us all about that in a few minutes, but welcome to the show, Jeff. Thank you. It's great to be here. Um, Let's start. We will get into all of that good stuff, um, but let's kind of start with uh, an introduction to the National Marine Sanctuary and um, what you guys, your mission and what you're all about and and what folks experience when they come to see you up in Alpena. Yeah, the Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary is about 450 square miles of Lake Huron, and it's, it's very much like a national park. Um, but it's part of a national system of, of America's ocean treasures. We're the only marine sanctuary on the Great Lakes, and we are designated to protect about 200 historic shipwrecks that lie beneath the beautiful waves of Lake Huron. Hmm. And what we do here is research, education, uh, but also access. We work to try to get people out on those wrecks to enjoy them, but just to make sure that they help protect them for future generations. Hmm. Jeff, why is uh, that region um, so important for this kind of like the uh, the shipwreck areas? Because we have a lot of shipwrecks all throughout the Great Lakes area. Oh, yeah, we do. But what's so s- special here, and I don't, it's always weird to use the word special when you're talking about shipwrecks, but yeah. uh, is that a lot of things happening in one spot, converging right there. There's a bunch of reefs and islands and uh, two weather patterns come together there, and the shipping lanes all c- come together. So lots of shipping uh, over the years, all converging onto one spot. And that left us with about 200 shipwrecks. And for those that aren't familiar with it, the cold, fresh water of the Great Lakes has preserved these shipwrecks like no place else in the world. And, and these are literally some of the best shipwrecks anywhere you go. People come from all around the world uh, to look and dive and snorkel and kayak. We're even seeing people going visiting these, these uh, wrecks out on paddle boards now. We have a glass bottom boat. So there's many, many ways you can get out there and enjoy the crystal clear waters of, of Lake Huron. You know, I'll say, I, I think that the glass bottom boat, even if you want to then go out in a kayak or or a a paddle board is great just because you learn so much about the wrecks that you're seeing. Then it's not just seeing them. You can kind of learn about their history and and how they got to be where they are at while you're looking at them. You know, that's that's so right. It's it's such a cool experience because you're experiencing the natural beauty of the Great Lakes. I mean, one of the world's best uh, natural resources, the history of these wrecks and what these wrecks did when they were ships and ships liked them is they really not only built places like Alpena and, and the entire Midwest, Detroit and Chicago, but they, act, they really fueled um, the economy in the 19th, 19th century that built, built the country. So they're such an incredible part of our history, and, and each of those vessels has incredible tales to tell. Well, that's the nice thing about uh, the uh, sanctuary. You get to learn about all those things in the uh, museum complex itself. You even get to go on a ship. Um, it, you get to kind of go into a ship uh, that's that's on display there, um, and it and they have a, a I guess a virtual storm. You yeah, go you feel through. the power of Lake Huron yeah. all around you. And, it's you know, so cool. You, you find out why we call it Thunder Bay so yeah. without giving the, some secrets away. But yeah, you know, and we 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 have a wonderful museum here that's great for kids. Hands on, you're crawling over stuff. Uh, it, it's it's a great way. And what we try to do is get people to come here. Uh, visit our exhibits, but then go find out what's in our great state yeah. parks in the area, what's what's out there in Lake Huron. Well, it's a very cool thing, that whole um, sanctuary and, and the museum itself. So now, um, you know, we, we've learned that you have a big international remote-operated vehicle uh, yeah. program coming up in just a few days. Yeah, so for about a decade, we've been working uh, with, we do a lot of education throughout the state, and Teams of students uh, for the last year have been building underwater robots, designing and building underwater robots uh, to com- complete missions. And it's, it is a competition, and there is about uh, 40 regional competitions across the world within the last two months. And the winners of all those competitions are descending on Alpena uh, June 26 to compete in an international competition. I think we'll have about almost 20 countries represented, 19 different states all coming here uh, with some of the brightest kids from around the world uh, with, with these. And they range in age from uh, grade school through, uh, through colleges and universities. And so they'll be here for that. And what's, what's been neat is for this past year, they've been learning about 
uh, Thunder Bay in Michigan and the incredible uh, resources of the Great Lakes all around the world. That's cool. So that's the 26th through the 28th. And uh, then just just a short time after that, you have a, a big uh, Thunder Bay Maritime Festival. Yeah, and it's, it's on the 4th of July. And if people have not been to Alpena on the 4th of July, I don't think there's any town that does it better. Uh, parade, a great small town parade that starts with a parade, ends with a wonderful fireworks show above Thunder Bay. But in between that, we host uh, uh, the, the Maritime Festival, and we bring in some tall ships and research vessels, live music, uh, the exhibits are open, uh, all types of activities. We have a 5K race this year, a cardboard boat race where mm. people build and uh, cardboard boats and try to make them across the river. It's it's a great time to watch people do that, and uh, it's just an incredible, fun day. And uh, you know, Alpena is such a special place, and uh, it's a great way really to get a flavor for it. This year, we're we're even bleeding over to the fifth of July, and we're going to do a, a couple more races with a paddleboard race, uh, and then also a, a seven mile uh, paddling challenge, which would be anything you can row and paddle. So. It'll be a, a great time just to come and enjoy Northeast Michigan. Now, these, these cardboard boats, are, are these like, you know, boats that somebody would sit in, or are they so, like, remotely yeah, the, operated? So, yeah, the event on the 4th of July, the cardboard race, I, I guess we have about four races this weekend, <laughs> but uh, that one is you have to build uh, boats with nothing but cardboard and duct tape. And well, duct tape is all you need. <laughs> that's right, yeah, and uh, it is an incredibly fun event. There's some really creative uh vessels that come and uh it turns into a battle between the the, the different boats some of them i hesitate to call a boat yeah. uh many don't make it a uh, few make it across the course so it's it's a lot of fun to watch <laughs> uh so uh, you know in addition to all of that of course you're always offering uh the the rides from the museum to uh, go out in the uh the glass bottom boat what do they see when they're out there you know, I mentioned there's these 200 shipwrecks out there, and, and many of them are, are right here in the bay, right right outside of Alpena, shallow water wrecks that um, that w- the boat takes you over. You not only get a tour of you know the beautiful waterfront of the Alpena area, but uh, we go over different wrecks to learn about the history of the wrecks, and people are always amazed to see how shallow some of these wrecks are and how yeah. crystal clear the water is. Uh, you know, sometimes we get the freighters coming in out or our commercial fishing boat, and because this history is still alive today, and Alpena is still very much tied to the working ports here, and uh, it it really is a great way to to get a flavor of of what's lying below those waves. I, I think people would be surprised, especially if they haven't spent a lot of time in the Great Lakes, like you said, with how clear the water really is. I know when we were out there last time, um, I have pictures of shipwrecks that I took from my iPhone just leaning over the edge of the boat, and I might as well have been down there with them. It, the, it's Caribbean clear water, mm-hmm. and, you know, it's just so gorgeous. And, um, you know, again, people from around the world come to Alpena and to the Great Lakes to to study and, and visit these shipwrecks, and uh, this is a great way to go see them with, without having to jump in the water and get wet. It's a really a, a special opportunity, and of course you can do that with the uh, fun festival all around you for the 4th of July at the uh, Thunder Bay Maritime Festival that's coming up on the 4th of July and a little bit on the 5th as well. For more information on everything at Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary, all you have to do is go to thunderbay.com. NOAA.gov. That's for NOAA. Thunderbay.noaa.gov. I want to thank Jeff Gray, Superintendent of the Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary, for joining us today. Uh, that big, uh, fun Fourth of July event's happening up there, but there are a lot of others all around the state, Michelle. Absolutely. East Jordan is celebrating Freedom Festival the 25th through the 28th with a family friendly festival for everyone. And uh, Freedom Hill County Park in Sterling Heights is celebrating their start. And Stripes Festival, the 26th through the 29th. It is one of Michigan's largest free festivals, so a great place to take the family. Uh, we have the Antique Tractor, Truck, Engine, and Machinery Show at Gilmore Car Museum in Hickory Corners. So this is a great way to go check out Hick- uh, Check out the Gilmore Car Museum with some phenomenal cars and have some other great events happening. Kids pedal tractor pulls, antiques, uh, other great events. Bay City River Roar is going on at Veterans Memorial Park in Bay City the 27th through the 29th. Professional powerboat racing in downtown Bay City, providing thrills and spills along the rough waters. So be sure if you want some adrenaline rush to check that out.
You've got, this one sounds like it's up your alley, Dave. The Caseville Country Rib Stack Festival, the 27th through the 29th. <laughs> Try out different ribs under the tent. Nothing like some ribs. Ah, I love ribs. Um, and of course, mm. Caseville is famous for their cheeseburger and Caseville Festival. So this is a different... It's paradise. Yeah. And it's a rib dice now. <laughs> um, Welcome Home Weekend and World War II Encampment is going on at the Wartsmith Air Museum in Escoda. It's a hosting reunion weekend. Um, that's going on the 27th through the 29th. And the second annual Frederick Music Festival is happening up um, in Frederick near Grayling. Uh, lots of live bands for free uh, with a craft show and a flea market. And last but not least, Art in the Park is happening in Kalamazoo on the 28th. So go to Michigan.org to check these events out. And How? So many more. How do you choose? How do you choose? I don't know. There's, Spin a wheel. Oh, my gosh. I guess. Lots to choose a from. A wheel it. of fun. Well, of course, one a very favorite festival we get to talk about next. That's the Cherry Festival. We'll tell you all about it right here on Travel Michigan, where your trip begins at Michigan.org. <laughs>